Lesson 2.5 Part 1 is on reasoning with, uh, with properties from algebra. <coughs> so we're going to use things that you already know today. The next time I see you, we're going to do some harder proofs that involve some geometry um, reasoning. So maybe we're going to have things like, oh, I know that's true because it's a linear pair. Oh, I know I can do that because they're vertical angles, right? So we're going to use words that we learned in Chapter 1. So today, we're going to talk about addition property of equality, multiplication property of equality, reflexive property of equality, and so on. So addition and property of equality. An example of this would be if I had, you don't have to write this, but if I have like 5x plus 7 equals 2x minus 3, if I was trying to solve this, I could add 3 to both sides. When you do something to both sides of an equation, it's one of these properties of equality. Okay? So that would be what we would call the addition property of equality. Does that make sense? Okay, same idea with subtraction property of equality. Equality. So if I start out with like A equals B and I subtract C from both sides, that's the subtraction property of equality. Multiplication property, I can start with a statement. I can multiply by the same thing on both sides. Division property, I can divide by the same thing, uh, the same thing on both sides, as long as C is not equal to zero. So maybe I should say that um, C is not equal to zero. Um, reflexive property. Have you heard of reflexive symmetric transitive? Have you heard these words before? So the reflexive property is just something that says like 5 equals 5, right? Is that true? Is 5 equal to 5? Yeah, <laughs> so that's the reflexive property. Pretty easy. Think about a re reflection. Symmetric property says if A is equal to B, then B is also equal to A. That's pretty basic, right? Symmetry involved. Um, a lot of people get those confused, though. Uh, so don't get them confused. Reflexive is where it's like one thing equals the same thing, and symmetric is where you switch. So A equals B. B equals A. Transitive properties. So if you're like A is equal to B, but I know B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Okay, so it transitions from one thing to the other. So if I knew like X is equal to 2, but X is also equal to Y, then 2 is equal to Y. Maybe I should write Y equals. Let me, let me do it where it's one thing to the next. But then I knew 2 was equal to Y. Does that make sense? So first equals second, second equals third, then you can say x equals y. So that would be transitive property. And then the last one is substitution property. Transitive property is a special type of substitution, so if you just write substitution, it's fine. Um, but it's like if you know that a is equal to b, then you're, you can replace b with a, or a can replace um, b in any equation. All right, so let's start out with these. So it says for numbers 1 and 2, solve the equations and write a reason for each step. So most people that take geometry like today. They like doing this. It's not hard. Okay, so the first statement that we always have is the problem that we were given. So I write that in our first, so notice how I have the statements and reasons columns. Our statement is just going to be what we're getting as we solve it out, just like normal with regular math class as we solve things out. And our reason is just why we're allowed to do it. So our first reason is always given. Do you guys all see this? This is a point on your test. Done. You just write given, first step, right? So we were given the problem 3x plus 12 equals 8x minus 18. So what's the next step? What do we want to do to both sides? We can do anything. Yeah, what do you think? Um, maybe add 18. Yeah, so let's try to add 18, add 18. So if I add 18, add 18, I get 3x plus 30 equals 8x. And what did I do to both sides? I added 18 to both sides, so I'm going to write the addition property of equality. All right, now what do we want to do? <coughs> yeah, Cam? Um, subtract 3x to 8x. Yeah, subtract 3x, subtract 3x. And when we do, we can write 30 is equal to 8x, or not 8x, 5x. So this was the, I would say, subtraction. Now, if you did call it addition, though, I would count it right. Because it's really the same as adding a negative 5, right? It doesn't make sense. So addition and subtraction are kind of the same. And multiplication and division are similar. Like, they're the same, right? So if I multiply by 1 half, that's the same as dividing by 2. All right, so what do you think, Cam? Uh, divide by 5. Divide by 5, divide by 5. So we get x equals... Six, Six, and that was the division property of equality. All 
Okay. Now you could have one more step. Like sometimes teachers are really picky and they're like, if they write something where they say prove, oops, prove, P-R-O-V-E, that X is equal to six, I would actually do one more step and I'd say X equals six because I want to write it exactly the same way they had it for the prove statement. What would that be? Wow. Symmetric. Symmetric. It's where you switch them around. So we could also have this. This would be symmetric property of equality. I'm not too, too picky about that, though. <coughs> All right, so this next one. So the first step, we write down the problem that we were given. And we say, why did we write that down? Because that's the problem we were given. Done. We like that, right? All right, so next one. So I'm going to go ahead and do what? <coughs> I'm going to distribute it. All right, so I'm going to distribute it in, and I get 27z uh, minus 36 equals negative 64. And the reason is because I used the distributive property. We don't have to say of equality. Do you guys know why we don't say of equality? It's not equal. It's not, it's not like on both sides. Like I'm not like adding something on both sides, multiplying on both sides. All right, now the next one, I would just combine those. You can say simplify or combine like terms. Different books will say different things. I don't care which one you say. So you just are like, oh, I just simplified the left-hand side. So as I combine those, I get 28z minus 36 equals negative 64. Now what? Yeah, Cam? Um, add 36. So when I add 36, I get 28z equals negative 64 plus 36. I think it's negative 28, so check for me. So we added to both sides, so it's the addition property of equality. And then our last step is divide by 28. Divide by 28, so we get z equals negative 1. And that's the division property of equality. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, easy enough. All right, start number the next one, number three. See if you can get it. So a child's dose C for a medicine when an adult dose of 500 milligrams with an adult dose of 500 milligrams can be found by using the child's age A in years by the formula A equals 6 over 125 C minus 1. So solve the formula for C and write an equation or write a reason for each step. So we're trying to get the C by itself. That's what it means by solve the equation for C. So if we want to get this C by itself, what's the first thing that I have to do? Yeah, so the first reason was given, and then the first step is I'm going to add one to both sides, add one to both sides. So I'm going to say a plus 1 equals 6 over 125 times c. And I did that by the addition property of equality. Okay, so I only have one more box, but you could do this in two if you want to. So sometimes I don't give you enough boxes. You can add add with onto the box if you want. So if I was doing this in two steps, I would multiply the 125 over, and then in the next step I would divide by 6. But how can I do this in a single step to get rid of the 6 over 125? Yeah, Brett? Totally. Let's multiply both sides by 125 over 6, right? So as I do that, I have 125 over 6 times a plus 1 equals c. So I've now solved for c. So that was the multiplication property of equality. So if you need to write yourself a note, we're going to multiply by 125 over 6. 
All right, and then if it really bothers you that the C is on the right, you could do your um, symmetric property of equality. I don't care. You can just leave it there. It's fine. So it says use the result to find the child's dosage for an eight-year-old. So if you're eight years old, that's the child's age, right? And it said a child's dose C is found by the child's age A. So A is equal to eight is what we're using. So go ahead and plug that in. You can use your calculator if you need to. So we're plugging in A equals 8. So I'm going to have 9 times 125 over 6. What did we get? Did you guys get 187.5? Did you guys get that? And our unit, units are milligrams. So the adult dose was 500, and we're going to cut that in more than half, right? We're going to cut it down to 187.5 milligrams. Okay? This is always difficult when you have children trying to get the exact amount. Like I love when the, the doctor's like, give 4.3 milliliters or whatever. And you're like, what? <laughs> I got to use a little syringe and try to get it right. All right, so here we go. So number four. So the formula used to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius is C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. So solve the formula for F and write a reason for each step. So I'm going to have 5 ninths F minus 32. So that was what was given to us. <coughs> And we're going to do one thing at a time until we get the F by itself. So what do you think, Amita, you know? What do you want to do first? Um, what about it? Multiply it in, like distribute in? Yeah. We could do that. So you can multiply it in. Do you guys see an easier way? Yeah, Rhett? Can you multiply Nine over five, you could get rid of the five nines by multiplying by nine over five. So I think I'm gonna choose that way. Not that this wasn't right because I think it, it's good, but I just don't like the number of five nines times negative thirty-two and I don't want it in my problem. It's gonna be a gross number. So I'm just gonna go out and get rid of the five nines by multiplying by nine over five. So when I do I get nine over five C equals F minus thirty-two. So I multiplied on both sides, so it's the multiplication property of equality. Yep, so what do we do, Joseph? Yeah, if you want to like divide by five ninths, you could totally call that the division property of equality. That's right. So especially when you have those fractions, like what do you division, multiplication, doesn't matter. So whichever one, I would count both of those right. All right, and then adding the 32 over, we get F equals 9 over 5C plus 32. So that's the addition property of equality. So some people might write subtraction property of equality, which is kind of weird on this one, but you could like subtract out the negative 32, right? Subtracting the negative 32 is the same as adding, so <laughs> that'd kind of be right as well. So it says use the result to find the Fahrenheit temperature at 24 degrees Celsius. So that means our C value is 24. We want to find F. So we're going to plug in. C is 24 to find what F is. So we're going to do 9 fifths of 24, and then we're going to add 32. Did you guys get 75.2? Uh -huh, let me write degrees Fahrenheit. It's fine. You guys know it's degrees Fahrenheit when it's F equals, right? I don't want to confuse you with two Fs. Okay, does that make sense? Have you guys seen that formula before? Yeah. It's an equation of a line. You can always get it if you ever get stuck in the future and you're like, oh, I can't remember that formula to convert degrees to Fahrenheit. You can use two points, Celsius and Fahrenheit, 
Do you guys know what zero degrees Celsius is and what 100 degrees Celsius is? What's zero degrees Celsius? 32 degrees, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you guys know 100? 200 Ah, look at you guys. I'm so proud. Good. And then you could come up with the equation of the line, like finding the slope between them. That ends up being the 9 over 5 or 5 over 9, depending on what equation you're using. Yep. Does it make sense? <coughs> so you can convert. Okay. So anyway. Oh, that's the last one, isn't it? All right. Let's do some little game type.